Thank you, Mike. We gather today to remember and commemorate victory over Japan, VJ Day, 75 years on. The months before the surrender of Japan on the 15th of August, 1945, were truly momentous. In the May of that year, victory was declared in Europe. In July, Britain held a general election in which the Labour Party won a landslide victory. Churchill left Downing Street and Attlee became Prime Minister. Between these dates, less than three months, the war continued to rage in Asia and the Far East. The brutal battle of Okinawa, in which the United States lost over 81,000 men and the Japanese 117,000, prompted a declaration from the Potsdam Conference by the Allies calling for Japan's unconditional surrender. President Truman told Japan to surrender or suffer prompt and utter destruction. The Japanese rejected the declaration. A week later, on the 6th of August, the United States dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Three days later, the second atomic bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. The day after, as Mike has mentioned, Emperor Hirohito, whose voice the Japanese had never heard before, told his people and the Allies that Japan would surrender unconditionally. And thus, VJ Day was announced by the Allies, British and Commonwealth, on the 15th of August, 1945. So against this background, today, we remember the sacrifices of the British and Commonwealth forces. We remember this was a very different war to that in Europe. All war is cruel. The Asia-Pacific War was crueler than most. We remember this war was fought over an area larger than the theater of war in Europe, Africa, and the Atlantic combined. We remember the war involved fighting marked by extremes across the vastness of the Pacific in monsoon-drenched jungles on snow-covered hills and in scorching, insect-infested tropical heat. We remember the fall of Singapore and the Malayan Peninsula that resulted in the surrender of over 80,000 British, Australian and Indian troops in Singapore and a further 50,000 in the peninsula many of whom became prisoners of war. In the same time frame, we remember the loss of two of the Royal Navy's capital ships, the Prince of Wales and the Repulse, to Japanese air attack with extensive loss of life. We remember over 140,000 Allied prisoners, military and civilian, many kept in atrocious and harrowing conditions to work as forced labor on such projects as the death railway from Burma to Thailand, and during which thousands of Allied personnel and local people perished. We have the privilege today, a resident of this village, of having a child prisoner of war with us, who was kept into activity in the Philippines for over three years. Mrs. Suzanne Mail is sitting here behind me today. We also remember the British and Commonwealth successes that helped turn the tide, notably the 14th Army commanded by General Bill Slim, an army not established until late 1943, and one drawn from people of many Asian nations. It stopped the invasion of India, the historic battles of Imphal and Kohima. One of Slim's soldiers was Captain Tom Moore, who has been so prominent in as an example during today's COVID crisis. We remember Southeast Asia Command, led by Mountbatten of Burma, that directed the Allied effort that retook the Malayan Peninsula, in this and beyond, units of the Royal Air Force's 3rd Tactical Air Force and the Royal Navy's Pacific Fleet played a vital part. And we remember finally that BJ Day is so significant because it marked the end of the Second World War on all fronts. As Prime Minister Clement Attlee stated, the last of our enemies is laid low. The war against Japan for British and Commonwealth people involved over a million military personnel. British and Commonwealth casualties numbered over 71,000 dead and 12,000 prisoners of war. Millions of others from other nations, military and civilian, lost their lives in this savage conflict. The cost in human life across the region was staggering, and over 50 million is a number frequently quoted. 
Given all this, the words of King George VI, our Queen's father, in his broadcast to the nation 75 years ago today, truly capture the meaning of VJ Day. He said, our hearts are full to overflowing, as are your own. Yet there is not one of us who has experienced this terrible war who does not realize that we shall feel its inevitable consequences long after we have forgotten our rejoicings today. And drawing on these remarks, we remember and commemorate the heartfelt words of the Kohima epitaph in Kohima Cemetery in Northeast India. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Thank uh -huh.